Hello there everyone, it's Miriam from Pain Outside the Box and today my aim is to briefly explain the link between chronic pain and the brain and to scientifically validate the current TMS and neuroplastic pain approach to chronic pain and symptoms. So first of all, I have to say that I, I am not a scientist. I am not a doctor, I'm a coach and teacher, and I base my teachings on research and what I've learned from others and their scientific and research studies. Okay, and this is exactly what I'm going to do today to try and explain to you the link between chronic pain and the brain in the simplest way possible so that you can understand the basics and so that this will give you confidence to work with your brain in order to overcome your chronic symptoms. Okay, so what do we know? So there are various kinds of ways in which we can feel physical symptoms in the body as a result of what's going on up here, right? So the most common, I think, or at least from my own observations, is muscle tightness, okay? So a lot of people complain of waking up with their muscles tight. They complain of neck pain or back pain that is very much related to tightness because when they go, for example, and visit a physiotherapist or a massage therapist, this is the first thing that they are told, that their muscles are tensed up, they're tight, okay? And what we know about this is that there is a definite link between chronic stress and muscle tightness. So first of all, when we are in a state of stress, it could be even short term stress. Okay. Our muscle stands up. It's as if they're ready for action. Okay. So stress is a highly activated state. So we're on edge. Our muscle stands up. If we really stop to notice, we can notice this ourselves, right? The problem is that Nowadays, there's so much stress, it can become chronic stress if you, you know, if you never resolve a problem, if you're constantly worried about the problem, um, thinking what you should be doing, if you're constantly on edge, that's chronic stress. And that can lead to chronic muscle tightness, which can also result in some pain. Okay, so these are the usual kinds of pains that, you know, we notice they don't bother us as much, but we start thinking, oh, maybe there's something wrong with my neck or maybe it's my posture. But rather than just your posture, it would be the muscle tightness because of all the tension plus your posture or plus the lack of activity. Okay, and with this kind of chronic pain, usually people see improvement, at least temporary improvement with things like massage, as well as with uh, exercise, if they're not scared of the exercise, because that's another story. If you are scared of exercise, you might end up tensing your muscles even further, and then it might hurt your body even further. Okay, so basically the science that we know so far in this regard is that when the body is stressed, muscles tense up. Okay, so muscle tension is almost a reflex reaction to stress. So it's the body's way of guarding against injury and pain. So chronic stress, however, causes the muscles in the body to be in a more or less constant state of guardedness, as I said. So when muscles are taut and tense for long periods of time, this may trigger other reactions of the body and even promote stress related disorders. Okay, and the most common types of syndromes that we see in this case is body tension type headaches and migraine headaches, because these are associated with chronic muscle tension in the area of the shoulders, neck and head. And also muscul musculoskeletal pain in the low back and upper extremities. Okay, so it has been especially linked to, to job stress, but I believe other kinds of stress as well. Okay, so that's one kind of, you know, chronic syndrome, let's say, the, the muscle tightness that becomes so uncomfortable and can become also quite painful, okay? And uh, if you stop to notice your body right now, you might even be able to notice this tightness. You might feel that an area of your body is, is more rigid, tight. You might be able to even relax right now just by, by 
imagining your muscles loosen up or just by adopting a more relaxed posture. I like to recommend this. Think about how you will be moving if you were just slightly drunk, right? You know, just slightly happy. Probably your body would be a little bit more loose and relaxed, okay? So this is a way of kind of, you know, temporary, temporarily playing around and relaxing your muscles. Some people can also do it consciously. After they notice a tight muscle, they can consciously let it go. Okay, and there are also various kinds of meditations that can help you with this. Okay, the other more tricky kind of chronic pain is chronic pain that is sensitized in the body. And here is where I talk a little bit more about the link between chronic pain and the brain, right? So basically today we have proof that chronic pain changes the way that the brain works, basically. And to back this up, I've consulted Alan Gordon's The Way Out, his popular book, The Way Out. And in this book, he actually describes a case study wherein a chronic pain patient has had a brain MRI when he was in chronic pain and another brain MRI when his chronic pain resolved. In this case, it resolved through pain reprocessing therapy, okay, which I'll talk about later on. So basically, he's also got the scans of the MRI in the book, and it actually shows that, you know, the two scans of the same person are different, right? And this is proof that the brain actually can change when one is in chronic pain. And it's not just one pain center, um, according to this case study, it's several areas of the brain that are more activated when one is in chronic pain, okay? So that definitely proves the link between chronic pain and the brain. So what happens really? So I cannot again pretend that I know everything because we don't, nobody knows everything about how the brain works, but we also know that there is a process called central sensitization that occurs in people with long-term chronic pain. Okay. And to explain this concept a bit better, maybe I should write out the definition here. Okay. So central sensitization is defined as an increased responsiveness of nociceptors in the central nervous system to either normal or subthreshold afferent input, resulting in hypersensitivity to stimuli, responsiveness to non-noxious stimuli, increased pain response evoked by stimuli outside the area of injury. Okay, so in a nutshell, what does this mean? In a nutshell means that the brain can learn to become hypersensitive to stimuli. So stimuli, a stimulus can be anything. It could be an activity, it could be touch, okay? It could be the weather, okay? So what happens is a process whereby the brain and body becomes hypersensitive, overreactive is another word I can use, to these stimuli. So it overreacts through an increased pain response, okay? Because pain is always a dangerous signal. It's there to protect us from something. If we injure ourselves, it's there to tell us, hey, stop, you know? So it creates pain so that we stop what we're doing and we take time out to, to heal ourselves, to let our body heal itself, okay? So the problem with central sensitization is that this danger signal becomes overreactive, okay? And even things now that shouldn't hurt start to hurt. So just think of it in this way. Things that shouldn't hurt can start to hurt, okay? The brain can learn this faulty programming. Um, and this is why people experience pain in different areas of the body that are not related to injury. This is why some people are increasingly sensitive, okay, even to touch, like people who have fibromyalgia symptoms, for example. So we know today that there is this process that's happening in the brain that's causing this increased sensitivity, okay? And uh, I mean, there's a lot of evidence out there, there are a lot of studies, and we know that this factor plays a part, okay? What we don't, you know, what we, we know, but we, what we don't really know so much is how to teach people to undo this process, okay? 
Um, some, some practitioners and doctors think that, you know, this is what happens. That's it. You know, that's what happens. But nowadays, however, there is some proof that um, through our brain's neuroplasticity, we can reverse this. And there are a lot of case studies, some of them, again, in, in, uh, are described in Ellen's book, The Way Out. Um, but basically, neuroplasticity is a thing, and neuroplasticity refers to the brain's ability to change and make new connections, okay? So in the case of chronic pain and hypersensitivity to stimuli, it's made like erroneous bad connections right it's learned to become more reactive to these stimuli to create more pain but it can unlearn this and we found so far that one of the things that helps the brain unlearn this reaction is to teach the brain to feel more safe okay and this is what pain reprocessing is about okay this is also what tms work is about what mind-body work for chronic pain is about. It's teaching the brain that, hey, okay, these sensations are not really as dangerous as you, as you think they are. They are messengers telling you that something's gone a little bit off, okay? But you can react differently. You can choose to react differently in order to change this response eventually, okay? I mean, Let's say there's someone who thinks he's in danger and he's screaming at the top of his voice, right? So his neighbor is bound to call an ambulance or the police because he's hearing the screaming, right? So this is a danger signal. So it happens the same with pain. If we think we're in pain and this pain is dangerous, we're kind of screaming inside, we're scared, and we fire off the alarm. But of course, if this person realizes that, oh, there's no danger, this, the snake he thought had been in his bathroom ended up being just a tiny harmless lizard. So this person stops screaming and the neighbor thinks like, oh, I think he's, he's okay, actually. He goes to check in before calling the ambulance and setting off the alarm and he realizes, oh yeah, you're okay. And the neighbor says like, yeah, I thought it was a snake, but it's actually a lizard. I'm still scared of the lizard. I still don't want it to be there. I still would like to catch it if possible. Um, but you notice how, how things lightened up. And it can be the same with chronic pain, right? You can lighten up your reaction to chronic symptoms. You can dampen the fear bit by bit. Of course, there's a process and it requires practice. And as a result, the brain will eventually stop firing this alarm that leads to the process of central sensitization and hypersensitivity. Okay, so it's, it's, it's a process. And uh, yet again, I'm sure there could be other techniques that we haven't yet discovered and maybe even external aids to help with this. Um, but uh, I think we know enough already to be able to work a little bit on ourselves and on our relationship with pain to experiment and see what happens. Because after all, this is an individual journey. And from my experience, I found that those who recover the fastest are those who manage to adopt this mindset shift. Okay, so this shift from a reactive, upset individual or highly stressed individual to a calmer, less upset individual, okay, he's, who's not so scared of pain as he or she was before. So it's, it's all in this achievement of this mental shift, okay, that lowers and changes one's reaction to the symptoms. Okay, so if you'd like to learn more about pain reprocessing and how to work with your brain to beat chronic pain, I encourage you to check out my pain reprocessing techniques. It's a six week program where I take you step by step through the various mindset shifts, okay, and habits that you could change in order to lower and even eliminate the pain response. So check that out. And uh, that's all from me for today. I'll see you again next time. Bye bye.